Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple destined to be in love that loves reacting to some destiny. Yeah, Season of the Haunted. Yes, yeah, so this is part two of our Season of the Haunted All Cutscenes reaction. And uh, you can actually get early ad free access and get ahead, get a month ahead right now on Patreon. Links in the description of this video. Or you can hit the little join button down below this video as well and uh, see it on YouTube. Yeah. returned to reality. Hmm. I shared your experiences and am uncertain what to make of it all. But I believe Stop shooting there it. is yet more to find within. Should you be willing to delve into his nightmares again? No thanks. A mind heist. The Sound of that. It's like inception. I know, we don't like cats. We were not always We were not always tyrants. Although, I don't know, it makes kind of sense. Sounds like a good dad, I don't know. Steel members. Drunkenly. Train too deep of the cup of mercy, that's a good line. Yeah, in the game of power, betrayal is definitely inevitable. Sabathun, 
Don't say your name three times. Vision. Yep. Not your deepest desire. Not your best desire, your darkest desire. You sound like a stoner. The witness would see things differently. The gaps between those threads. Freedom from the greater design. Freedom for all. It's callous and crypto, bro. <laughs> I have reached the limits of what this crumbling body can offer. So much more that I must do. I must shed my remaining attachments to this flesh and ascend. Drink the Kool Aid. It's always good when somebody needs mm -hmm. to prove loyalty. Yep. It's always good. Stuff.
Your mission remains, but a malicious tinge creeps these holes. A tinge? Final shape. I think that's the name of the last season, or the last like, expansion. Mm. I made things worse. Are you surprised? The ship was changing before we arrived, Crow. After which, Xenomorphs here. Things did not improve. Then let's get to fixing it. The amplifiers appear to be fighting an unknown interference, but they are working. These vines wriggle into everything, changing it. Reminds me of adventuring in the Black Garden. Our turning points always seem to come by force. Maybe yours. Yes. You've had an overabundance of choice in your life. Certainly not a lost child ricocheting between authority figures. How's your stewardship of him been, Guardian? This is between you and me. Steady. Listen to your handler. Wouldn't want to jeopardize the mission. Guardian. Went smoother this time. He's picking up on some of my old tricks. Starting to aim like me. Using your tricks against you sounds good to me. A lot of attitude for somebody who broke down crying last time we were here. Will your aim stay steady when the scorn call you father? If they attack me, if I have to. <laughs> if? And that's the door. Keep up, Aldrin. Chica. Have you returned to all the cosmic performance that is beyond you? A beauty forged outside of your understanding. You struggle as I did. A grub fattened on the lies of reality, writhing within a suffocating existence. But the silken walls of that cocoon are not a grave. Waiting to bloom. Soon you will emerge to see the magnanimous arc of eternity unfurled before you. Its story laid bare. You will understand what I understand. Our end is set. All that remains is the drama. The struggle to push open our walls. It's a Resist if you must. It is in your nature to defy even against your own best interests. It will only hasten your revelation. The Vanguard. <laughs> you were supposed to be heir of the Reef. Talk about a step down. Mara must be furious. The Queen is content that Crow has found his own path. She said that? <laughs> Turning over a new leaf, I suppose. Amplifier established. Crow will reach his second beacon shortly. The interference appears to be echoed by the phantoms that haunt the Leviathan's halls. It is spreading. The lockdown is again lifted and power rerouted. Proceed. I can't imagine seeing a stranger with my sibling's face, but finding out that someone isn't who you thought they were. I understand that. Oh, it's your entire life. I'm a guardian of the city. I'm sure Mara and I will work together at some point. We'll just need some time alignment. You hearing this, Guardian? One foot back in the reef. Prince Crow doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but we'll get by. Funny. That's the last one. I'm ready when you are, Guardian. Crow, you can do this. You are strong enough. Yes. When we first touched down, I wasn't sure. But I trust you. Both of you. Exercise your demons. I'm ready to finish this. <laughs> I am 
sympathize with your devotion to a cause. But aren't you tired of this little dance? I hadn't found my footing before. This time, I'm ready for you. Fanatic? Oh shit. Put it to rest, Guardian. Working on it. I told myself a story about who you were. A villain strung together from whispers of the things you've done. But you're right. I'm scared. I'm scared that our nature might make my friends dangerous to me. Or me to them. We all have parts we wish weren't there. Yep. But acknowledging them can make us stronger. Good job, Crow. Accept it. Accept that part of you. Heal yourself. No I'll hug. always be balancing on the edge of something terrible. But now I have someone to pull me back. Who? You. I can learn from your mistakes. My trials, too. Mm. Yeah. You point out the pitfalls, I'll fill them in. We'll right your wrongs together. See you around. Old friend. Good job, Crow. Yeah. Guardian. Eris. Thank you. I did it. Yay! Good job, Crow. Yes. You are stronger than your doubts presumed. The Leviathan's connection to the Pyramid phrase. Our gamble is working, Guardians. Second chances. <laughs> Turns out I've been using mine wrong. I thought being a Guardian was my destiny. That wielding the light for good was the most I had to offer. But it's clear now. This is what the Traveler chose me for. I was reforged in the light for a purpose. To remake something dead and gone into something beautiful. To learn how to forge something new from what we were. Everything Aldrin did to the Reef, the Scorn, Fickrel. I have a responsibility. No. A calling to make them whole. And I can't replace Cade. But I can cover his old patrols. Maybe organize the hunters a bit, if they'll let me. Clean up some of my mess. I don't know if I can fix everything Aldrin left broken. But I can try. Good job, Crow. Yep. I have long said that the darkness can be used as a power for good, even when others doubt it. By helping Crow to accept his past as Aldrin saw, we have changed the inherent nature of a nightmare into something new. A manifestation of healed trauma. A memory of yeah. the man Crow once was. The best of him. Aldrin is as much a part of Crow as the darkness is a part of you or me. And there is more to it than pain. In this success, we have discovered the key to our victory. Through our bond, the crown of sorrow, we could convert the nightmares into a force against Callus. But the process to convert these psychic constructs will not be an easy one. It is a battle guardians are not accustomed to fighting. I know that shortcoming all too well. Resume your work aboard the Leviathan Guardian, and I will prepare for the next 
severance ritual. Per our arrangement, I am delivering a status report on the Imperial Survey of the Leviathan. Our scouts confirm your reports of psychic anomalies emanating from the Red Phantoms seen throughout the ship. Scion Opti theorized that these phantoms are manifestations forged from a psychic background radiation permeating the Leviathan. Darkness. Navigational equipment shows that the Leviathan entered a well, gravitational doing her nightmare. End. She wanted her help. It was at once within and outside of the, the known universe for an indeterminate period of time. When it emerged from this state, most of its crew were missing, and an infestation of unknown fungal matter had infiltrated all decks of the ship. Command structure appears to have broken down. Loyalists who emerged from the anomaly disembarked from the Leviathan. We are attempting to determine their location. Those currently aboard are newly grown, combat-ready clones that have no higher brain function. They operate as an extension of my father's will. At Valis Forge's suggestion, I have submitted a recommendation for Crow to participate in a joint investigation to supplement our own. It is my hope that together, we can tear into the beating heart of the Leviathan and drag my father screaming into the light of your son. Hmm. Until such a time, we are Cabal, we eat the mountains, we drink the seas. Well done. I have a message for your commander. Tell him not to fall to temptation as I did. Our enemies wield our love like daggers. Protect your heart. With it's really nice, old memory wall. In studying this memory of Aldrin Sov, a truer nature of the nightmares is revealed. They are born of darkness and drawn to it like moths to a flame. Callus is such a fire. Through the Leviathan, Callus's mind reaches down to the lunar pyramid, forging the connection that draws the nightmares to him. And should that connection be severed, we can stop Kellis dead in his tracks before he causes any more damage. Your success with Crow isn't going to go unnoticed. Kellis will push back. He may be doing so already. Recently I've been visited in the helm and elsewhere by one of the nightmares here is bound to the crown. We need to push harder. I will be accompanying your next severance mission to weaken Callus's connection to the pyramid. You and I will get this done. Definitely use your help, Zavala, but what are you seeing? Mm -hmm. You talk to us, buddy. Yeah. We must enact the next ritual of severance before it is too late. And Guardian, keep watch over Zavala. Uh, yeah. As For we sure. Crow, the commander may find confronting his power be the most difficult mission he has ever faced. What happens if I Does my ghost even recognize me as the man he raised? You are a warrior. Your true identity is only known to your enemies in the split second before their deaths. This is your truth. Maybe. Maybe I've never been more than an instrument of violence. Hmm. But sometimes... I wish I was more than that. You are. You are, Zavala. You are a leader for those who need to be led. A champion yeah. for those who cannot be one. You are enough. Well, I said, I said Kaido. Zavala, I heard a voice over comms earlier. Was that? Yes. It was. Are you sure you want to do this? You could take a step back and let me shoulder some of the burden. No, Saladin. I made my choice. And now I have to see it through. The light bearers spill blood without any thought to how much they have in their own soul. Do you even remember the last time you felt it made you? Your deaths are usually fiery, almost yeah. effortless. Yeah. You rise like a bird, snapping so easily back into flight. Someone should teach you pain, Guardian. 
Be humble. The second severance is at hand. We proceed as you wish, Commander. But whatever you hear, you must press forward. Understood. Thank you, Laris. Set your amplifiers. Sever Callus' connection. And tread carefully. I see your new protégé, Zavala. I wonder, have you told them what became of the last warrior you freed? This construct is coded in the same spores found aboard the Glycom. Lycora says they could connect consciousness through the darkness. Isn't it magnificent? The Leviathan was once my prison, but now we are one body. Existence, my mind. Is that so? Mechanical function is compromised, Guardian. It's harmless. Don't let him stall you. I wouldn't dream of it. It is a unique delight to feel the Leviathan's inhabitants wriggling through my innards. And when you do battle across my steely flesh, Sensation. Caress every dark reach you can find. In your futile journey, you will come to see things my way. You will lay down yeah. your arms and stay. Don't think so. I'm kind. online. I'm detecting the commanders as well. As we learned with Crow, these devices will help, but our success hinges on resolving Zavala's inner demons. Mm -hmm. How can you trust Zavala when you keep secret the life he led before the city? I knew him before he was your commander. When he was young and boastful, we used to sit together, listening to the Sekiras. He listens to them sometimes, still. They remind me of what I lost. Focus, Zavala. I am. Why do you leave our names unspoken? Do the memories of that time pain you so much? Clearly. Security lockdown lifted across all nearby bulkheads. You are clear to proceed. Huh. Did you shoot someone in the butt? Come here. We are with you. Dead. I was ambushed by scorn and a horror I couldn't bring down. I, I couldn't reach you. Who's sneaking around? Zavala, tell them you confide in them. Why hide your feelings? It doesn't matter how I feel. <sighs> See, that's how that it really does in this moment. You put your duty before your heart. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like Zavala. Yeah. The phantoms trapped in this fetid hull sustain something that is growing. Zavala's nightmare is a part of it, but each amplifier further isolates her presence from Callus' hold. Stay with me a little longer. Life moved on around us, but we can wait here for a moment. You chose to move when you could have stayed. Safi. Uh, don't. Safi. You have made your choice. So probably you have to forgive yourself for that. Go, go yep. on ahead. I'll find my own way. Oh no. Give him a hug. Oh, you gotta make peace with it. Final amplifier set. I must be seeing things. The scorn are wearing... <laughs> Impossible. The House of Devils is gone. Your eyes deceive you. Don't be fooled. You've reached the Severance site, Commander. The Guardian is closing on your position. The brave Zavala holds his offering in clenched fingers. Afraid to lose the pain he has kept close for so long. It's all I have left. You hoard our memory like a starving animal hoards bones. I'd call that reverence. I mourned. I begged for your forgiveness. What more can I do? Speak our names. Release us. Good. You said 
we mourn our death, Zabala. Stood at our grave, cried out in prayer to your traveler. For a long time. What good did it do? No ghost found us. Instead, the traveler gave the light to your enemies. Mm. It's not that simple. It is that simple. That abandoner deserves your duty more than me, more than our son. It is why you left us both to die alone. Ah. Oh. You seem like that. I chose you. I tried to give it away. You killed him as much as the fallen did. You wove your galaxy into his bones. Oh, you can't change his bones. Killers should meet. Oh, uh. She's slipping away from me. Strength, Zavala. See through your guilt. Still carries That's blame. tough, yeah. Mm -hmm. We cannot proceed until he finds forgiveness. Forgiveness? You share meals with fallen behind your walls after what they took. This new life dishonors your old one. It dishonors your son. Hakeem. Your true family wouldn't torment you. This true. is your grief, Zavala. My husband is not a liar, and I am speaking his words. He knows what he is. A hollow man leading others to die. For a silent god. Enough. Guardian, bring the commander back before any more damage is done. Yeah, you look so well. A hollow man. Leading others to die for a silent god. <laughs> Is that what I've become? Have the years whittled away my nerve? I was convinced that seeing her might make things easier. That her absence cuts deeper than her presence. It's not her. But they are equally sharp. <laughs> Sophia, she wants me to speak her name, to confide my feelings in you. What good does it do? Go and Try see Iris. I'll tell her you're coming. She'll know what to say. Zavala will not speak to you of his regrets. But I will not let him bear them alone. Tell Here, story. Listen closely. Whispers and confessions as I have heard them. He would tell it differently. But memory clings so loosely to the truth. Hmm. I will share what I know. Before the vanguard, before the city, there was a woman. Her name was Sophia, and she was a surgeon. She came to Lord Saladin's gates, offering her skills in exchange for shelter. Zavala was his protege then. He had been taught his purpose, and he followed it without question. Of course he did. She maddened him. He infuriated her. <laughs> But respect grew to admiration, mm. and admiration to love. Does it surprise you that Zavala loved? No. Nope. She was meticulous and gentle, strong-willed, stubborn, fearless. Sounds like a man. It began with an infant orphaned in a fallen raid. Saladin mm. had taught Zavala duty, war, and the light. But Sophia showed him that he was more than an instrument of violence. She had one life, and she would share it with him. <sighs> they called the boy Hakim. <laughs> a 
And he, called Zavala, father. Yeah. In his joy, Zavala thought to abandon the light, as he had abandoned Saladin's ways. That joy ended as it began, with their son. <laughs> when Hakim followed his father into battle, Zavala could not protect him, and Sophia could not save him. Oh, Hakim died in his mother's arms. Zavala wanted her forgiveness, but she knew there was nothing to forgive. And that giving up the light would be no absolution for him. Mm. They return to the lives they once led. She found love again. She had a daughter. And when Sophia passed, he asked her to forgive him. Through each generation, he mourned. He asked for their forgiveness. And still, he has not found it. Because in you, you have to forgive yourself, Zavala. Oh man, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, that was definitely uh, worse than I thought it was going to be for Zavala. Uh, I mean, I think with Sophia, I kind of guess that maybe Zavala's story was going to be a woman he couldn't save was sort of where my mm. head had gone as, as like what his demons would, would be. Then I kind of wondered if maybe there was a romantic connection, but the thought of a, a kid just hadn't entered my brain and that that kid would have died. Zavala's not to blame. No. But I also can see why it feels impossible for him to forgive himself. You know, Zavala has such a strong sense of duty, and so I have to think that also part of it is, like, in this in his nightmare, which is basically his own uh, view of, like, what he blames himself for, was that, like, the uh, Sophia said, oh, you're... St st uh, you gave your like stubborn, strong will or whatever, like or like sense of duty to your son. You uh, wove it in within him, and that's why he ran out after you, as if like you know you taught him wrong, or like he was. That's like uh, this. Your sense of duty is the wrong part of you, and it's like it's not a good thing, and it got your son killed. I also feel like it could be, um, and maybe it's mentioned, maybe it doesn't. Zavala maybe thinking if he had just not left to begin with he wouldn't have given Sophia this, the pain of losing a child because they wouldn't have gone off. They wouldn't have had, you know, or they wouldn't have had a kid together and he wouldn't have died. And like, cause he ends up back there anyways. And then she goes off and has a family. And he's like, what if, you know, what if that was just the way it was to begin with? And I didn't get involved. And like, I just had stayed where I, the way I was supposed to with the light and, um, and not giving up my duty. And if I'd done that, then some innocent, you know, like my child wouldn't have died and he and she wouldn't have had that pain, which is not the proper way to think. But I just feel like that's another way that he's just like he's beating himself up. It's interesting what you said about Hakim and being basically instilled with Zavala's sense of mm -hmm. duty and, and the how in this perception of his nightmare that seems to have like been teaching him wrong. Yeah. Um, and as you were talking about that, all I could think is how monumentally unfair to Hakim. Mm hmm. That the assumption was that it was his duty that made him run after his father and not love. Mm -hmm. Not love and a desire to protect and, and fight beside him and serve with him. Like, yeah. she, I'm not saying duty's not wrapped up in that, but like, it seems to diminish the character of his son in his guilt. Like, his guilt is diminishing yeah, the character yeah. of his son. Um, I think that sometimes happens with us, right? Like, we we're so busy beating ourselves up and making ourselves feel bad and feel guilty for something we've done wrong mm -hmm. that like we are unfair to the people around us or who we may believe we harmed because there's also their people. They make their own choices. They may have acted out of whatever, which drove them, but us being so self-centered in our guilt 
kind of undermines them. And I kind of feel like that's part of what's happening right now with Hakeem. So I got to speak up for Hakeem. It's not fair. Good. Good for you. You speak up for Hakeem. It was so tragic to see the story, but there's also a part of me that's also so happy that Zavala had that, even if it wasn't forever. Like, he had this great love story, this this love that was so powerful. And first of all, I love how it started, mm. like rom-com style, where they drive each yeah. other mad. <laughs> Zavala um, in a rom-com. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then like, from that, they, they come together, they find respect for each other, respect leads to admiration, that leads to love. Mm -hmm. Then they have this this incredibly deep, passionate love, so much so that Zavala's going to leave duty, leave what I think any one of us mm -hmm. would say is is kind of the cornerstone of his personality. And he's gonna go off and, and be a family man. Like he's left the army, he's moved to the suburbs, he's got the wife, the kid, the white picket fence house, and he's happy. Like. I know that wasn't his forever life, mm -hmm. but those memories, that joy, that happiness, he will carry that forever. And not everybody necessarily gets that. It's well said. And it was, uh, my point was going to be to ask the question, like, you know, they say that it's better to have loved and lost and to have never loved at all. And, you know, what your view on that is. And now we know what that definitely is. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I agree with you is that that's that's not easy to find and um when you do it's uh it's amazing and so instead of using it as his nightmare and pain and guilt um to use it as uh love and and happiness and uh, to cherish the memories of what was um and something that not everyone gets to have uh so hopefully zavala is able to yeah to forgive himself and um, kind of do what Crow did, where Crow conquered his his, his demons, uh, you know, accepted the part of him that was Aldrin, and that he can't make mistakes, but to learn from them, which is what we, we talked about last time, was you gotta learn from your mistakes, and if you make the makes the same mistake again, then try you know next time, try to learn. And so Zavala just needs to forgive himself, but also not like lose it. It's not like forgiving yourself and like forget it. It's using it in a different way and using it in a positive way, just like Crow is using Aldrin in a positive, the memory of Aldrin in a positive way. Pain at its core is here to teach us. On like a fundamental survival level, when you do something that physically hurts yourself, that's how you learn not to do it again. Mm. And the same is true with emotional stuff. You know, we we do something which causes us pain. We have to learn from it. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to judge ourselves for it and to like beat ourselves up. The the voices in our head can be so cruel and so relentless sometimes. But that's that's the inhumane part of ourselves. That's kind of showing inhumanity to ourselves and by extension to other people when we judge so quickly and so yeah all consuming so fundamentally that like that's it this this singular thing is what we are judging all of eternity for um you know it's humanity is recognizing that we are all so monumentally screwed up mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the fun like that's the the messy parts and and everything like that's where you get some of the best stories. That's where you have some of the funniest moments. It's not in us walking around being perfect. That's not where it comes from. Like the juice in life comes from our flaws. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it screws things up, but sometimes it's awesome. And like you can have wonderful creative moments that's born out of being flawed and exploring flaws that's you know mm -hmm. creativity comes from all of that it doesn't come from being perfect the other thing i was going to say is callus in the beginning talked about a loyalty test and i yeah. made the i made the kind of like oh that's always a good sign yeah and i was i was listening to a podcast recently about leadership and i was talking about this sort of like obsession that leaders will often have with loyalty but then it talked about how like the best leaders don't choose the people around them based on loyalty. The best leaders Challenge them. choose people based of integrity. Yeah. Because if they are of integrity, they will challenge you when they need to, 
support you when it makes sense, and question you so that you can question yourself and be able to back up your decisions. And I just thought, I was like, wow, I was like, you know, I think there's sort of a, a societal perception that like, yeah, you surround yourself with people who are loyal to you. Like you want your friends yeah. to be loyal to you. You want, um, you know, if you're in work or business or a team, like you want your teammates and your coworkers to be loyal to you. Like we have this thing that loyalty is sort of a litmus test for a deeper connection. But loyalty isn't always earned. It's not always deserved. And it doesn't necessarily mean something. But integrity and people of integrity wanting to be around you, support you, work with you, yeah, that means a ton. That is great advice. Um, integrity. I like that because, like, I don't know, it's like integrity is the good version of, like, pride. Because pride, if you if someone that's just, like, proud we talk about the problems with, with the pitfalls that you can have with pride and um how it can really uh harm you especially if you try to wear it like as a as a badge of of, of honor and make you know make you stubborn and make you not um make you angry um and but integrity that's something different i mean it's it's the same thing whereas you don't want to give up your values and your and your uh and your morals um so you're there you're already clinging to to something but i think it also allows you the chance to to be humble and like to have those discussions with somebody that has integrity and like allow yourself to change and to be wrong um so that's a that's great advice i think we associate integrity with pride because if you have integrity like you've kind of earned a right to be proud mm -hmm. but having integrity isn't inherently prideful because being proud isn't always necessarily earned. Some people are proud of themselves just because they're pompous asses. Yep. Um, and it's unearned. And mm -hmm. it's a uh, sort of like a, a superiority crutch that yeah. they can use. But like somebody of integrity, they have their their values and their morals and they they back it up with the way that they live and mm -hmm. the choices they make. Just like so, integrity, yeah that's where their integrity comes from. And then if you bump up against them on something, they're not going to fight you because they're proud and better, but they're just gonna be like, that's my red line. I can't do that. Mm. If you can do that, good for you. I can't do that. And like somebody who has that strength of character, we respect the hell out of in society. I think sometimes we confuse pride mm -hmm. with strength of character. Yep. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want to jump ahead and get early ad free access, then join Patreon. Links in the description of this video. Or you can also join our membership here on YouTube. There's a little join button down below. Thanks for seeing our reaction for part two. But just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive.